All right, welcome back again to another Koen Sean Reviews. And in this video, I'm gonna to try to give you a fairly comprehensive look at horror, kaiki, occult, mangaka extraordinaire, Shinichi Koga. If you know the name Shinichi Koga, it's probably because of this, Echo Echo Azaraku, which is available in English. It was released in 1975, and it was subsequently made into multiple movies, TV dramas, anime, and spin-offs of all of those things. But we'll get into that a little bit later. First, I'd like to kind of go through a little bit of Shinichi Koga's background, his history. Then we'll look at some of his releases I have here, and then we'll flip through some of the panels and so you can get an idea of his style. Um, but to begin with, um, Shinichi Koga was actually living in Shanghai at the end of the war in 1945, but his father died of some illness. So he, his three siblings, and his mother returned to their hometown of Hakata in the Fukuoka prefecture of Northern Kyushu, Japan. When he returned to Japan, he was a child and he was dirt poor. He even recounts uh, being so poor he couldn't afford shoes, the pain of stepping on rocks, walking in the snow, and how awful that experience was. And of course, a lot of people in post-war Japan at that time were extremely poor. Some people died of starvation and eh, yeah, I'm sure you know a bit about that history. But uh, at any rate, he came back to Japan and then upon reading Tezuka Osamu Tezuka's Lost World, which came out in 1948, Shinichi Koga decided that he wanted to become a mangaka. That was going to be his goal in life. Um, actually, at one point, he even sent a fan letter to Tezuka, and Tezuka actually replied to him. But unfortunately, uh, his stepfather found the letter in the mail before he could, and his father opened it, read it, and burnt it because I guess he was quite a strict father figure and he didn't want his son going down the path of the Monogaka. And uh, unfortunately, Shinichi Koga never got to read the contents of those letters, of that letter. Um, but at any rate, uh, he pursued his dream anyways. He left school after junior high, which was 16, and he worked for three years uh, painting signage, working in a candy factory, hauling ice, anything he could do to save money so that he could make his way to Tokyo to pursue his dream of becoming a mangaka, which he finally did. And after arriving in Tokyo, a little bit after that, at age 21, he finally was able to get his first release out through uh, Kuro Neko. Kuro Neko was a publication run by uh, Hibari Shobo, which many people might know because Hibari Shobo is, was really big for horror manga, mystery manga, kaiki, the weird or bizarre manga. And this is one of the earlier iterations of Hibari Shobo. Um, in fact, he worked together alongside Umezu during this time. And uh, over the next seven years, he produced, I think, around 48, nearly 50 uh, things for that were released in these... Uh, Kuro Neko and other Hibari Shobo publications. Um, but we have to remember that at this time, this was the Kashihon era, in the, especially that really was big in the 1950s and 1960s. It's very likely in the early 50s, that's how he ran across Tezuka's Lost World and uh, was got exposed to it because it was quite cheap to rent manga through the system or books at that time. So even the poor could get access to these things. Um, but at any rate, um, he produced about 50 works over this time and uh, because it was the rental book and manga era, mangaka didn't get paid very much at all for their submissions. He only made 250 yen per page, which if you do the math, if there's say one story, he has one story in Kuroneko, let's say it's maybe a 40 page story or something like that. It's not a lot of money. It's about 10,000 yen. In fact, he was so poor at that time, he and his wife lived in a apartment that was only 10,000 yen rent per month. So you can imagine he was probably doing side work in his early years too to try to make ends meet or, you know, or his, or his wife was. But uh, a lot of that changed in 1966. Um, in 1966, uh, there was a bit of a, a kaiki manga boom with um, a weekly shoujo friend or shukan shoujo friendo. They really were doing well releasing these kaiki manga, these bizarre, weird, and strange, and horror mangas. And uh, at that time, 
rival publications were also looking for mangaka who could help them compete with uh, Shukan Shoujo Frendo. And he got picked up and he started releasing his series, um, which was uh, Shirohebi Yakata, or White Snake Castle. Not White Snake like the hairband, but Castle of White Snakes. Right? And that was uh, supposed to be, that was his first serialized um, release, not just one-off stories. So he had finally been able to publish a serialized work, and it was only supposed to run for, I think, about six months. He ended up running his serials for about two years. Um, so then he was, you know, got a little bit more stability in his life, and he really started focusing in on just purely horror and uh, occult-themed stories rather than before where he was also doing some kind of mystery or some kind of semi-sci-fi stuff uh but that all changed with that big kaiki boom in 1966 and then everything really changed for him in 1973 why because that was the year of the release of the exorcist just like in america the exorcist was a huge hit here in japan and because of that there was a big uh, occult boon and people were voraciously consuming uh, occult-related film, TV, and books and manga. So he was able to enter in on that boom. And he was actually uh, approached by the head editor for Weekly Shonen Champion and um, asked to produce a series just for them, which ended up becoming Echo Echo Azaraku. Yes, and this is really the bread and butter of his fame. I mean, for me, I mean, Echo Echo was not the first thing of his I read. I, was, I read a lot of his one-offs first, but uh, Echo Echo Azarak was really palatable. Um, it was hardcore for the time because, I mean, there's a lot of uh, violence, uh, sexual assault, nudity, and occult witchcraft, but people were, this was new for a lot of people, so people were really into it. Um, but uh, so at the, then he kind of like finally made it as a mainstream mangaka. Um, Echo Echo ran from 1975 to 79. It was extremely popular. By the 80s, there was movies coming out. By And this continued on for almost three decades of releases and re-releases and re-re-releases of different stories or different takes on uh, the Kuroi Misa character and the theme of Echo Echo Azarak. So, oh, sorry, more notes. Um, so he's really considered to be one of the main pioneers of Japanese horror. You, put him, you could put him alongside the likes of uh, Umez, whom he worked together with, Hino Hideshi, Hideshi Hino or Hino Hideshi, who was a huge fan of his, uh, Kaneko Inuki, who also read a lot of of Koga, and um, even in a recent, I think it was the Mamben interview with Junji Ito, Junji accredits uh, Umez and Koga, and of course Tezuka as being some of his main early influences. So he really is one of the main pioneers of Japanese horror manga and occult manga, so it's great to know that if you're into manga, if you're especially into horror manga, you should definitely know who Shinichi Koga is. On a little bit of a side note, um, there's not a lot of information out there on Shinichi Koga. I think one reason is because he seemed to be a pretty shy guy. There's uh, an anecdotal story that I read in this which was an invaluable resource when I was researching him. This is called Kaiki Mangado. And in this, um, Miyazaki Masaru writes and interviews four famous mangaka. He has a second volume where you also. This one has Shinichi Koga, um, Hino Hideishi, Junji Ito, and Kaneko Inuki. So you can see how well respected he is with his peers. And um, the anecdotal story told in here was that one time he had actually been at a shonen champion party and had the opportunity to meet Osamu Tezuka, who was there. And he wanted to go up and tell him about how he changed his life, how influential Lost World was on him, and how he owed everything to Tezuka. But unfortunately, due to his nerves and his shyness, he was not even able to introduce himself to Tezuka. Then, years later, 
uh, Shinichi Koga was living in Higashi Kurume, which is a suburb of Tokyo. And he would go on his daily walks around the neighborhood. And that happens to be where the estate of Tezuka is located. And they, the story re recounted in this book was that he would go on his walks, he would stop at the gate of the Tezuka estate, and he would always give a little smile or bow in memory of Tezuka. I think this was his way of introducing himself after all those years because he didn't have the, well, he had the chance, but he wasn't able to when he could. Um, at any rate, uh, let's move on. Um, we'll take a brief intermission here and just two minute break so you can see a little bit of a weird, uh, good, bad, very oddly done uh, anime that I subtitled um, based on Eko Eko, Az it's Eko Eko Azraku. And then we'll go on and look at some of these volumes and some of the panels inside. <laughs> しかし、そんな食わがたの怪物なんて本当だ。マジでいたんだ。には私たちが調べてみる。そんなのいるわけないでしょ。バカらしい。おい、おい。やめろよ。な、なんかごめいてる。ネオビルバス。ベストリア。ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
when the tormentor tries to fight back with her blade. Misa takes it from her, stabs her in the throat, and leaves with their signature Eko Eko Azaraku Eko Eko Zameraku. Yeah. So that was his bread and butter, but he produced a lot of other stuff. I have some of the Hibari releases, I have some re issues, some stuff that came out on other other places than Hibari, like this is a Lemon Comics release. This is Kyofu, Horror, Chi no Yakata, The Bloody Castle. I did a review of this before, so I'm not going to talk too much about this, but you can see the influence The Exorcist had on even Koga's works. Even the back cover. And that's just one part of the story. It's not even a major twist in the story. Here we have Namachi Otsu Yojo, which is about two blood sucking babies. Um, this is a theme that he hits on a lot in his books, which is um, infants with powers, or maybe they're blood sucking. In a short story in the back of Kuroshiya Kapseru, which is a little bit more sci-fi, there's some little bank robber babies um, going around capping people. Uh, these babies are pretty wild. These, of course, are blood-sucking babies. And the victims tend to not be adults. A lot of kids get messed up in Shiga Kogen's work because these were directed at shonen. These were directed at kids, you know, junior high school students, I think was in, uh, maybe high school students as well were the main target audience. And the adults come to find her dead. No spoilers here, guys. I'm just showing you some, some of the parts. Um, there's also some odd themes that kind of go on in some of these, like this one here, he's in love with a girl that doesn't like beauty, just likes the ugly. So he takes sulfuric acid and he's like, brother, don't do it. Deforms his own face. That's pretty sick. That's from Chi ni Norwarita Bakemono no Yashiki. Um, this is one that is pretty common, pretty easy to find. This is Kyofu no Kuchibashi, or the horror beak, the beaks of horror, maybe. And here's an odd theme that you don't see every day good old fashioned sky burial. Not as organized as they do in Nepal, I think. But this little girl is being fed to the birds. There's a sickening twist after this too. But again, I don't want to give away any of Kyofu no Kuchibashi. Here's a horror comics release. Chi Midoro no Mushiyashiki. So, the bloody insect room. So, another theme that we get in some of his books. Let's start on this page. Eh, that girl better look behind her. Whoa, axe to the head. Brains. The brains are coming out. Yum. And cannibalism. You're going to get a prion, prion, and end up with mad cow disease, dude. So that's pretty disgusting. Just a couple more here. Give you like a good, well-rounded look. Um, a lot of the horrors befall children. Here we have... Her dorm roommate, 
and this is in uh, Yami no Shinin Gakuen. This is a story about a girl who goes to a school to become an idol. However, they are not training young girls how to become idols and superstars here. There's something sinister going on. And this girl here is her roommate who seems to have disemboweled herself. And then she shrivels up and dies. Classy. This is more of an SF sci-fi release of Koga Shinichi's, but I mean, it's called Koroshia Kapuseru, the assassin capsule. And this is odd. I really enjoyed this one because it was so different than his usual stuff. What it basically is about is, I mean, there's a few stories here. There's three different stories under this theme, but we have these pills that when you take them, they go into your system and it's hard to see there, but here little dudes come out of the capsules and kill you from the inside out. They attack your heart, your ears, your nerves, make your face go limp, make you fall down. They do all kinds of stuff to you to kill you. And they crawl in your arms and your belly. You gotta be careful you don't get in their stomach though, in the person's stomach, otherwise you melt if you're one of those little dudes. That is Kuroshia Kapuseru. And this is the reference I referred to earlier. This is Kaiki Mangado. And this is where Miyazaki interviewed and wrote about famous manga artists. And then Adachi Tsuyoshi put it into comic book form. So here we see Koga Shinichi. Shinichi in all of his wondrous glory. This is probably when he was in his late 70s, here, a bit before he died, that this was put out. And here, as I mentioned earlier, we can see him on his daily walk. And we can see him in front of the Tezuka estate. thinking about his old idol, Osamu Tezuka. I thought that was a wonderful way to wrap up that story. And this is Koga Shinichi in all of his wondrous glory. So much, so much, so much stuff. I strongly recommend picking up uh, Eko Eko Azaraku in English because it is available. There's a few fan translations out there of other stuff, but it's really hard to find. Someone like me one day when I have more time needs to go through and translate a bunch of this stuff. But until then, thank you to everyone who subs, who likes, who shares. You guys are awesome. I hope you like this video. I know it was a little bit long this time. Join us in our Discord. Lots of cool recommendations over there and everyone is very nice. And I will be catching you soon. Matane.